Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I feel sorry for SNP members. Here was the, here was the big report, long awaited, published in a flurry of breathless press releases. Members were champing at the bit to debate it at their conference. But after the long bus journey to Aberdeen, discovered it wasn't even on the agenda. But, but I, I am generous. I am here to help. We have carved out time today so SNP members can have their say, to tell us what they really think, to let off steam. It could be quite a cathartic experience. <laughs> the Scottish Growth Commission is a substantial piece of work. It, the, the SNP members would love me to stop there, but they don't know what's going to come next. It admits how challenging an independent Scotland's finances would be. It's a confession. It's the best case. It's not of many great choices. It's the stark reality. This is not some flimsy report easily dismissed. It's in the words of the First Minister's own close advisers. The First Minister herself described it as a blueprint. It's a significant development and it deserves scrutiny in this Parliament. Liberal Democrats oppose independence and this report, I believe, strengthens our case against independence. On the currency, on the volatility of the economies of small countries, on the, def the deficit, on the years of financial pain. That financial weakness is a direct threat to our National Health Service. It is that serious. Not just now. Let me go through some of the evidence, because I'm sure SNP members will want to hear this. In 2014, I, I warned the economies of small countries are prone to greater volatility. It was denied then, but it is now being confirmed by the Commission. Here's the section, B8.33. It says the greater volatility that small economies can experience also strengthens the case for fiscal conservatism. Mm. Then I warned that an independent Scotland could not demand control of the pound. It was furiously denied. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Rennie. By the excuse me, Mr. Rennie. Yeah, I can understand why this is a, quite an emotive subject for everyone. But I really would like to hear what Mr. Rennie's saying. So if we could have a bit of murmuring and less shouting, that would be useful, <laughs> Mr. Rennie. The louder they shout, President Officer, the happier I am, I have to say. <laughs> Scotland's government would cede effective sovereignty over monetary policy, says the report in C1.5. I warned that oil was volatile, falling and could not be relied upon. This is now admitted by the Commission. The report says oil should not be depended upon for recurring annual commitments. I warned that Scotland could lose the annual UK Barnet dividend of around £9 billion. Angrily refuted then, now agreed by the Commission. Not only has this gone, but an independent Scotland would be paying money to the UK for years after we'd left. Who's heard that before? 3.139 in the report states the annual solidarity payment is modelled at around £5 billion. Pounds. That's £5 billion pounds being paid to the UK. Goodbye to the Barnet dividend. I warned that there would be spending cuts denied in 2014, now admitted by the Commission. A 6 to 7% fiscal deficit is not sustainable and action will be required to reduce it to more sustainable levels. States B4.32. Figure 12.2 in the report makes clear that spending in an independent Scotland will be 1% less than GDP growth. So GDP growth of 1% or less would result in real terms spending cuts. Over the last decade, Scottish onshore GDP showed average real growth of just 
0.8% per annum. The latest forecast from the government's own fiscal commission, published last month, is for GDP growth to 2023 to be running at 0.9%. Looking back and looking forward, an independent Scotland would be facing cuts. In fact, it would last for 10 years, according to the report. We then anticipate a period of between... This is the, this is the government's own report. They should be listening to this. We then anticipate a period of between five and 10 years to put the public finances on a sustainable footing, states 3.201. Now, this is not just my interpretation. David Phillips from the Institute of Fiscal Studies confirmed. It's a continuation of austerity, he said. If public spending growth is 1% less than GDP growth, that's austerity. Even independent supporters themselves are saying that. Jonathan Shafi admitted it, it would open the door to various forms of austerity Mr. Rennie's politics. in his last minute. So, in short, in short, an independent country would face at least a decade of pain with cuts to public services without the backup of significant oil revenues. It would have no control over its own currency with an economy that was prone to greater volatility. Liberal Democrats are opposed to independence and always have been. The Commission confirms why we were right to oppose independence in 2014 and why we are determined to stop it now. All of the things that I want to achieve for Scotland, a country where we invest in people through education and mental health, where we champion science, innovation and research, where we take seriously our obligations to future generations and the environment, where we treasure individuals' freedoms and liberties. All of that can be better achieved by Scotland, rejecting the nationalist case and the cuts and restrictions it imposes on our country. I move the motion in my name. Thank you.